Welcome to another Gibbs Cam video. Today we're going to show you how to use Volumil Wireframe along with the Harvey Tool Database along with the Volumil Technology Cycle. So here we have our part here. As you can see here's the cavities that we want to cut with the Volumil. This is steel 1045. And so the first thing I'm going to do is of course face this off. I already have a uh, process already done for that for facing that off so I want to get to the pockets right now so I want to uh, inquire what the radius uh, is on these corners here so let's just go to the plugins solid inquiry and click on this radius and you can see it's 300 thou I believe all the rest are as well all the internal corners which they are so I'm going to use a half inch end mill so I'm going to bring up a volume mill tool path and create a new tool. And I know I want to use a half inch uh, end mill. We'll leave the rest of this kind of blank and everything here blank. But I know I want to use a half inch end mill. So for right now, I'm going to go into my volume mill and go to the technology expert up here at the top of the bar. This is in uh, version 13 in Gibbs. Okay, I'm going to choose carbon steel, Brunel about 84. I have a 40 taper machine. My machine I'm using is 12,000 RPM and my maximum feed rate is 1181 inches per minute. Now as far as workpiece holding, yeah I am really rigid so you can see the slider there. I'm going to put this on rigid. And aggressiveness, usually I start out in the middle but for here we'll kind of get a little more aggressive on here. And the tool path is volume mill. We're using a hydraulic chuck. Uh, you have a number of choices there, but you either want to use a hydraulic chuck or milling chuck or shrink fit. ER collets do not work well for volume mill wireframe. Uh, there's just too much pressure on the tool. It'll pull it out of your ER collet, so I would not recommend using an ER collet. So hydraulic chuck or these three will be your best bet. So we can choose what we want to use here. We can check them all or uncheck them all or just choose, pick and choose what we want to do. But I'm going to have, of course, check all, and I'm going to click on apply checked, or apply all, and this will give us all our feeds and speeds and step over and everything we need here. The only other thing we need to do is, of course, adjust our uh, where we want to start and where we want to end. Now with the uh, Gibbs, if I just put in uh, point 0.1 there, for instance, and if I hold down the Alt key, I can click on the floor and Gibbs will automatically calculate where that depth is. As you can see, if I put click on here, that's zero. Here, that's minus one. Down here is minus one. So we know we're at a one inch depth there. Um, I'm going to do a plunge clearance of point 0.1, floor clearance, leave a little material there. And so we're good there. Now I just need to adjust the tool. So I'm going to go up to the plugins, and as you can see in version 13, some of the newest versions have the Harvey Tool Library as well as Helical Solutions. We're going to click on the Harvey Tool database, and I'm going to tell it I want to use a square end mill, English units, so you see English metric, and the shank type is going to be straight. Okay, and as far as number of flutes. Uh, the technology expert in volume mill said to use five flutes, so I'm going to stay with five flutes. And the diameter, I said, well, show me all the end mills that are three eighths to a half inch. And this is what we get with Harvey Tool. Now, if you want to see the tool, uh, the actual tool from Harvey, we can click on this. But note, it says in the technology cycles that we should be about a half an inch and a half flute length. Um, to cut this part so we can have evacuation of the chip. So I'm going to click on this here and I'll drag this over here and as you can see this is the Harvey tool. This is just a representative of the tool uh, but this isn't the tool we're actually using. This is just a photo represents that. Uh, cutter diameter half inch, overall reach inch and a half, coating AIT Nano. You can always click on this to see more information on what the tool coding is so very good uh, database there okay move this back over and I'm going to click on import so it tells me it imported successfully close this and if I look at the tool 
you can see it has all the information there and it also has on the comments the Harvey tool number and all the information about that end mill so this is really nice to uh, choose your end mills here so let's drag this end mill down to use that tool everything else looks really good here let's click on this uh, pocket and we'll click on do it and now we have our toolpath there for our volume mill looks really nice now while we're there we might as well do this other pocket because we're using the same end mill so let's click here and do that now we have our volume mill pocket for that as well now I'm just going to come back with uh, uh, basically a finish end mill half inch and also five or I might change that to six flutes instead we can also use the Harvey tool database if we want to uh, or we could just uh, put in the information that we want to uh, for uh, shortness of time I'm just gonna leave it right there for now so we're just gonna clear this actually change the process to roughing with uh, the tool number three I'm gonna go to the depth there um, we're gonna leave a little stock on there for roughing so let's just uh, do that and so we're gonna rough out the pockets and then next I want to finish the pockets so I'm going to just change the process there to a contour again everything else there is good feeds and speeds so I'm going to start on here first and we'll do this one for finish and then the last one we'll do this pocket that direction end up over here and out through there and we'll do this as well and then we have our finished part so let's do a cut part rendering and you can see what it's doing turn on our cut part render let's rewind play as you can see going in with our end mill We're going right to depth but we're actually leaving about 10 thou on the floor and 10 thou on the side walls speed it up a little bit and as you can see the volume mill actually does a high feed rate when it returns back over to here volume mill does not use g zeros in the code because g zeros are unpredictable it uses a g1 for the high feed rate so it knows exactly from point a to point b where it's going speed that up a little bit now we're just doing a standard roughing process on the bottom leaving the same amount of stock and then we're coming back and taking a finish pass and of course we're taking a chamfer tool cutting around the bottom there and that's our volume mill toolpath works great with Harvey tool database and that's in the latest version and I also have a we actually cut this on a machine so here is the uh, YouTube video on how to cut that and you can watch that it's on my same channel thank you for watching